Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's a new year, so happy new year to you. Um, it's crazy. It's literally the first day of 2021, guys. But welcome back um, to my channel. It's just your first time here. My name is Oni, and I'm a second year medical student, pretty much detailing her medical school um, experiences so far. Um, in this video, I'll pretty much be talking um, about how I was able to gain admission into medical schools in the United States with low stats. So if this is something that you're interested in and you'd like to know what I did, um, definitely stick around. So let's get right into it. As most of you guys know, I am an international student. I applied as an international student to um, U.S. medical schools and I'm currently in a U.S. medical school. Um, and so basically applying as an international student requires like high stats like it's recommended that you have super high stats when you're applying and I knew this coming in I knew what I had to do coming in but unfortunately um, things didn't go according to my plan um, I definitely believe that it was impossible for me to get into any medical school especially because I'm applying as an international student I do not qualify for um, you know, the URM. Um, my plan as an international student to medical school is a struggle. And so um, with my low MCAT score, that pretty much decreased my chances by a lot. A lot of the medical schools that do accept internationals are like Ivy League top schools or just top medical schools in general that would not look at a 504 MCAT score or a 121 critical reading score, which were my scores. It's like way, 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 way past the minimum for most of the schools that do accept internationals. And so I was kind of like, walking on eggshells um, pretty much while applying. My chances were very slim. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to be able to get into medical school, but I did get into several and I feel like I owe that to the outside prep work that I did. Um, and so that's what I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to share with you guys the top five things that I did that was helpful um, to getting an, an admission with my low stats. So yeah, hopefully I'm not saying a lot of stuff and like what I'm saying actually makes sense. First tip okay. that I'm going to say is to apply early. I'm sure if you're watching this video for how to improve your application with low stats, you've definitely heard applying early. Like this is key guys, like the schools that gave me interviews were schools that I applied super early to. And so that's why I'm going to like emphasize that applying early is key. Sending your applications early pretty much makes you the first batch. Schools who actually look at like applications holistically, they're going to look at you pretty pretty holistically okay like you get the first pass you know they're looking at you there's not really many other, like too many other applications to compare with so it's great to just send your applications early like this is such a huge tip and i'm going to be sharing a video um i believe next week of my application process and just like detailing my timeline when i applied when i got my interviews when i got my admission um when i took my mcat when i took the casper test all of that stuff i'm going to be sharing all of that in a video so definitely subscribe so you do not miss out on that video um, the second thing is making your medical school list okay with making the medical school list you have to be like very realistic at least that's what I did I had to be super realistic about the schools that I was applying to and I feel like this was like the second or even the most important thing that I did so again being international I had to make sure that every school that I was applying to accepted an international students I had to make sure that every school I was applying to accepted my not only my 504 but my 121 on the critical reading section for example schools like Emory Medical School requires like a minimum of at least from the time I was applying I don't really know about right now by the time I was applying they required a minimum of a 123 on every section of your um, MCAT and 123 isn't really like that's actually a pretty like nice minimum or cut up but I was a lot I was 121 I was below that and so I knew I definitely had no chance like more than 80% of people definitely have a, more than a 123 on their MCAT score. So I knew if my applications went through, they were going to throw me out before even looking at me as a person. Once they see my stats, they're going to throw me out before even looking at me. And so I didn't want to like putting like resources into applying into a school that would definitely not look at me. So those are things that you definitely want to consider. Like. I was very, very strategic. I actually called every school and I made sure that they not only accepted internationals and not only accepted 504 MCAT, but they also accepted my 121 critical reading. And I called every school that I applied to. So um, that's something you should definitely look into um, depending on your situation. Just make sure that every, like the schools that you're applying to are realistic. You could definitely have several reach schools and schools that are sort of like within your range um, that you should apply to. Um, 
But yeah, you also want to be very realistic. Don't go applying to like a medical school that says their minimum is a 125 and you have a 124 in one section. I think they're just going to like ignore that and look into you. No, they pretty much screen um, the application so they don't get to see what you're made of. They really see if you've done some great work on the moon or you've like, I don't know, you built this whole company. Like they're not gonna see all of that because as you get screened out before they can get to literally look into your application. So you wanna be very um, strategic about the schools that you're applying to. So that's the second tip. And I am also gonna be posting a video of tips to um, actually um, selecting your medical school. So the things that I personally did when I was making my medical school list, I'm going to be sharing that video in the next coming weeks. So you should definitely, um, again, click the subscription button so you don't miss on that. Okay. <clears throat> I hope this thing is going well. So the third thing I'd say is to apply broadly and apply to as many schools as you possibly can. Now, if your intention is to not be a reapplicant and you're trying to literally just get into a medical school, then I definitely advise to apply broadly. Um, just to improve your chances. The more schools that you apply to, the greater your chances is math, <laughs> right? So definitely apply it as broadly as you can. Um, I personally applied to about 25 medical schools after I was able to, because there's not many that actually accept internationals. And so by the time I made my list, I called up all the schools. I got rid of schools that would not accept me either as an international or my MCAS score, just whatever it was. I was able to cut my list down to about 25 medical schools. I definitely had a couple reach schools on there, um, but these were schools that still looked at my applications, my application holistically. So I ended up having about 25 um, medical schools that I applied to, give or take one or two. Um, I had about 15 MD schools and 10 DO schools that I applied to. Um, and again, of course, there's a lot of schools and it's a lot of money. But at the end of the day, right, you're trying to improve your chances and you're trying to like apply as broadly as you can. If you decide to apply to about 10 schools and you're not sure you're gonna get into any of them, that's a waste of money. Now you have to get back into the whole process of reapplying the next year. And I mean, who wants to do that, right? So I just feel like it's best to just kind of put all your resources into the one application, like cycle, apply to as many schools as you can, apply broadly. A lot of people who have low stats do apply broadly because that's the best way to improve your chances of getting in. So the fourth thing I feel like is super important if you have low stats and you're trying to apply to medical school is to improve other aspects of your application. So if you have low GPA or low MCAT score, you can definitely work on other parts of your application. Like you can work on research, you can work on volunteering. Um, definitely try to boost other parts of your application. If you have a low GPA but it shows like an upward trend, that's also a very good thing. Schools definitely look into that. Um, for example, my MCAT score was not the best, right? But my GPA score was pretty decent and I had an upward trend, so that was definitely very helpful for me. And aside from that, like I also had pretty good um, extracurricular activities that were not even necessarily medical. So when it came to like volunteering medically or shadowing medically, I really didn't have as much of that, but I definitely had like activities that involved like other passions of mine um, and just other hobbies and stuff that I kind of dedicated time to just because like ge I just genuinely love doing things like that and so that was like something that I was able to talk a lot about on my application and I got questions on those like extracurricular activities on my uh, interview um, so those are things that you can absolutely like you know improve on work on um, and that would be helpful as well and so if you have low stats I definitely say go get as much volunteering go get as much shadowing as you can I mean the stats absolutely matter I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say they don't if you have pretty good stats you're in pretty 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 good shape when it comes to applying to medical school but if you don't and you know you're kind of like just over it like I was I was over retaking the MCAT I didn't want to do it anymore I was just tired of it <laughs> I was just like I'm just gonna apply so if that's your situation then of course you definitely want to work on your extracurricular activities so I forgot to mention but in a couple weeks as part of this medical school application series I will be um, posting a video on all extracurricular activities that I did while in undergrad and how I got into those activities in the first place. Um, I'll also be sharing um, some of the extracurricular activities that got um, me questions on my interview. I will also be sharing my full AMCAS application 
the entire thing so definitely hit that subscription button so you do not miss out on that the fifth thing i say that i wish i did but didn't get to doing um is calling schools um sending them sending them update letters um and just letting them know that you're interested of course you don't want to be annoying and just keep like over sending like letters and update letters you don't want to do that but you can send like update letters to specific schools that you're very interested in just for them to know what you're doing for example if you're working in a research lab or you just got published um or you know you got like some kind of award like whatever it is that's happening or you just research a volunteer whatever you're doing that you feel like would be um, a nice push for your application I feel like that's important to send and also just letting the schools know that you're very interested in, in their school and if you got accepted to their school you're definitely gonna attend is a good thing to do so just definitely sending update letters and just letting the schools know that you're interested is um, gonna be a nice push that's something that I wish I did um, looking to what people have done when it comes to sending update letters I also think it's a, a great idea when you're starting your application you can try to talk to like application um, admissions officers in those schools and just sort of ask them how they feel about sending update letters before you do because some schools might be good with, with that some schools might not be and the best way you, you know is literally by talking to them like talking to them specifically um you know you don't have to tell them your name you don't have to say anything just like ask them and see like gee are you guys okay with sending update letters what would you want to see from an update letter um is it okay if i sent in this like will it like be good for me to send in this portion or like, let you know that i'm interested whatever it is i'm um, definitely getting information from the school is very helpful so i think that's something you can do just talk to them ask them what's helpful and figure out how you can send out those update letters and um, pretty much um, increase your chances of getting into that specific school. So those are basically my five huge tips. If you have low stats, those are basically my five huge tips for um, applying to medical school. Um, you might have applied and you tried all of these tips and it just didn't work. Um, the best thing I'd honestly tell you, if you're truly, truly um, serious and um, determined to get into medical school, I would definitely say work on your stats. Retake that MCAT. I promise you, if you have better stats, your opportunities open up like crazy. Like schools literally start begging you to come to them um, if you have pretty good stats. So stats are honestly so important and I wish they were not as important as they were because being in medical school now, after having a freaking 121 in my critical reading section, like, and just being, feeling very um, inadequate, like, that's not how med school is. It's not really, it's not really about how smart you are, it's more so about how hard you work. And so those stats, like the GPA, MCAT, and all of that is just, it's, it's unfortunate that that's what a lot of schools use to pretty much test your ability of being able to do medicine and do med school because it really I just, personally my personal belief is it's not the best way to test for how um, successful someone's going to be in medical school I personally don't think it's the best way because some people have just had it easy from the very beginning um, when it comes to MCAT some people might have had access to MCAT prep courses while others didn't or just didn't know about it so there's a lot of things that go into these things um, and so I, Genuinely, I feel like this, you know, stats is just not the best way to um, assess someone's ability of like getting into medical school. But that's just how it is, and it's unfortunate. And so I totally understand the struggle. I understand how um, frustrating it can be with low stats and having to like apply to medical school. I totally get it. Um, but honestly. If you've tried all these five tips and they were just not helpful, I'll definitely say go ahead and work on your stats. If it's an MCAT problem, try to retake the MCAT. Try MCAT prep programs. I didn't do any prep, but um, Next Step I've heard is good because I know people who did Next Step and did pretty well on their MCAT. I know um, Exam Crackers is a good one as well. So definitely look into those prep programs. See if you can invest. Just put in the money in there. Invest into those prep programs and do not take the MCAT until you feel ready. I definitely will in the future very near future be sharing my MCAT experience and just mistakes that you should avoid when taking the MCAT. So again, if you don't want to miss that video, again, if you don't want to miss that video, definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications tab so you do not miss um, that video. And if it's your GPA that you're worried about, there's a lot of like programs that you could do. There are post back programs. Um, some programs literally offer you a spot in their medical school if you do pretty well in the post back program. It's almost like you're taking a gap year, but you're kind of um, a little bit more certain that you're going to get into medical school the next year. So those are things that you, look, you can look into. Um, there's a master's program that you could do to pretty much improve your GPA. Um, my medical school is made up of a lot of non-traditional applicants, the same as a lot of medical schools. So don't feel like, you know, time is going and you're sort of like, it doesn't matter. We look into like taking, you know, doing a master's program, doing a post back program. I definitely advise doing a, some sort of program that maybe sort of guarantees you a seat if you 
did X, Y, and Z because you know you already have one school down on your list and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be able to get into that school if you pretty much work hard and just do what you have to do. So yeah, those are my tips. Um, I really, really hope those were helpful. I know some of those tips are things that you've heard before, but every single thing that I shared are super important and you have to be like super strategic when you're applying and using those tips. So I'm really hoping those are helpful. Um, if you have any um, questions or any suggestions on videos that you'd like for me to make based on application process, definitely leave that in the comment section as well. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Definitely. Um, like this video, definitely subscribe to the channel because I will be posting lots of application tips in the next coming weeks. Okay, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. All right, so definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications tab so you do not miss when I post, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Happy New Year, guys, and stay safe.